lap, left back to line. Number two following Kenzie and Heavier, but three and mile five. Okay, number two. This video explains the physical assembly of the Real SimGear modular panel system, which is also used as the basis of the Real SimGear certified Cessna and Piper BATD systems. The first thing you'll want to do upon opening the box is make sure all of the main components are present. The largest and most obvious will be the panel itself, but there'll also be a couple variations of throttle brackets. If you're using the Logitech throttle or the TQ6 or 3, you'll have a bracket that looks like this. If you're using the Vernio throttle for a Cessna, the bracket will look like this. If you are using the Honeycomb Alpha yoke, you will also find an adapter bracket that looks like this. There should also be a smaller box inside, and if you open this box up, you'll find a couple bags of screws, one bag that will be used to connect the throttle bracket to the main panel, the other for connecting the throttle to the main panel. You'll find a power supply and a USB cable. You can put the box aside for the moment. To remove the main panel from the box, it's best to have two people assist but simply pull the panel with the accompanying foam packaging straight up out of the box. Once you have the panel out, simply pull the foam packaging off of each end and set the panel directly on your desk. If you look on the back side of the panel, you'll notice that there's a USB cable that's been taped down to the base of the panel. This USB cable is designed to connect to the yoke once the yoke is installed. It's usually best to try to tape this cable up and out of the way, typically in the upper right hand corner of the back cutout, so that when inserting the yoke there's no interference there. The first step in the assembly process is to insert the yoke into the panel system. This process differs whether you're using a honeycomb yoke or a Yoko yoke. The first installation that we'll demonstrate is for a Yoko yoke. For installing the Yoko yoke, it's best to tip the panel on its back. And you can use one of the foam inserts to support the backside. Just make sure that the foam insert does not interfere with the large opening for the yoke so that the yoke will slide smoothly into the base panel system. Once you've got the main panel laid on its back, simply take the Yoko yoke and slide it into the hole, being mindful of the USB cable on the back side. Try to make sure you're not pinching the cable, although it will be a somewhat tight fit. Once you've slid the yoke in, look for four holes that will align with the holes on the bottom of the yoke. And then in the box of parts, find the bag of the silver screws, the larger screws, and insert those into each of the four holes. Now it should be noted you may need to pull the yoke up or down just a tad bit to get the screw holes to line up. So feel free to grab the shaft and, and pull the yoke up or down as necessary. Obviously tighten the screws to keep the yoke from moving around in the panel system. Once you have inserted the Yoko yoke and tightened all the screws, you can go ahead and tip the panel upright again, being careful not to tip it off the front of your desk. Once it's upright, locate the USB cable on the back side of the panel and connect it to the Yoko yoke itself. If you happen to pinch the cable a little bit, during the installation of the yoke, you may want to just try to move it a little bit to the one of the corners to allow it to have a bit of freedom. Next we'll demonstrate the installation of the honeycomb alpha yoke. First locate the extra honeycomb mounting plate. You'll notice that this has a front and a back, the front being the wider tabs and the back being the narrower tabs. Then remove the plastic from the honeycomb 
suction plate and attach the honeycomb suction plate directly to the honeycomb mounting bracket. You may want to make sure that the front of the honeycomb bracket aligns with the front of the uh, mounting bracket. Once those are secured together, then turn the assembly over and insert it into the honeycomb yoke using the single pin system for the honeycomb yoke. And then tighten up the thumb screws. Once that assembly is complete, you can simply slide the entire assembly into the main panel, noting that you may have to slide it in at a slight angle in order for the back tabs to clear the front and back panel systems. Align the holes in the bracket to the matching holes in the base panel, and then using the black screws in the bag of screws, tighten all four of those screws down Once you've tightened those screws down, then locate the USB cable and attach it to the back of the honeycomb yoke. If you're using the Virtual Fly Vernio throttle designed to work with Cessnas, the process is a little bit more complicated. The first step you'll need to do is you need to remove the Vernio housing from the actual Vernio throttle. To do this, locate four screws on the bottom side of the Vernio yoke and remove those screws. And then remove the six black screws that are on the front of the Vernio throttle. Once you've removed all of these screws, the throttle body will, will slide out of the throttle cover and completely remove the cover, being careful not to damage any of the internal components. The way the vernio bracket is designed to work is that you'll ultimately slide the throttle body through the front of the bracket and then the throttle cover will go over top of the throttle again and it will slide up against the back side of the bracket which effectively sandwiches the bracket between the front of the vernio and the vernio case. There are six screws on the bracket that should line up with the six holes on the on both the throttle body and the throttle cover. So go ahead and slide the throttle through the hole in the bracket and then on the back side, slide the cover back over the throttle, again being careful not to damage any components. Once you have the back cover slid on, go ahead and reinstall the six screws on the front of the throttle. These will go through the throttle front, through the throttle bracket, and will screw into the cover on the back side. And make sure these screws are fairly tight. 
Now it should be noted because of the difference in thickness, the four screws that you remove from the bottom of the throttle won't be used. You will not reinsert those. Once you have the applicable throttle attached to the throttle bracket, the last piece of assembly is to attach the throttle bracket to the main chassis. To do this, the bracket just simply sits on top of the base plate and align six of the holes with the slots on the bracket and insert six additional black screws to hold the bracket in place. Once you have the throttle and bracket attached to the main chassis base plate, locate the USB cable from the throttle and connect it to your PC. You can use any of the USB ports on your PC. However, we recommend avoiding the use of the light blue USB port, as we'll want to use that in the future for the connection to the main chassis system. Locate the USB cable and power supply included in the accessory box that came with the system. The USB cable has two ends. One is a standard USB type connection. The other is a modified USB 3 type connection. The modified end is what connects to the back side of the panel. So go ahead and connect that cable. Then find the power supply. It's a two part power supply connect the AC cable to the power supply and then connect the power supply itself to the back of the chassis. It's probably best if you connect both the PC and the chassis to a full power strip so that you can power things down when not in use. On the PC end we're going to want to connect the USB cable to any available light blue ports. If you don't have light blue ports on your PC, the next best choice will be a red port and finally a dark blue port. Once you have the panel system all set up and connected to the PC, the last step in the process would be to connect the peripherals and the monitor to the PC. You'll want to set your monitor up behind the panel. You may need to use something to raise the monitor so that it has adequate viewing area above your panel. But once that's set up, also connect the power supply from the monitor to your power strip or outlet. And then locate the video cable that was included with your monitor, typically a DisplayPort cable. And you'll want to connect that to the DisplayPort connection on the back side of your PC. You do not need to connect any USB cables between your monitor or PC. Finally, locate the keyboard and mouse that are included with the PC. They are a Bluetooth enabled keyboard and mouse. So you'll want to find the small dongle that's included with the keyboard and mouse and insert that into one of the USB ports, typically on the top side of your PC, and then power on the keyboard and mouse. They should associate automatically. Once everything is connected, power on your PC, monitor, and make sure that the panel power switch is also turned on. Windows will boot up and all of your monitors should show a copy of your desktop. The LED strip that lights up the panel does have a small control module to the left side of the panel. This allows you to turn the LED strip on or off independently of the panel, change the color of the LED, allows you to change the mode of the LED. Once you've completed the physical assembly of your system and connected it to your PC, the last step would be to install the simulation software of your choice along with the real sim gear add-on or plug-in as appropriate. Please refer to our help site at help.realsimgear.com for more information about the software side of the setup. Thank you.